Hey everybody. So Tencent just released a paper and a model that uh, has the potential to potentially be AGI, uh, and it's uh, revolutionary and record-breaking. If you if you look at the numbers that are associated with the paper, which we'll look at in a little bit as we go through, but it's uh, pretty intense as to uh, what they're calling it Ola GPT, what it actually does. And then so the paper is dated May 23rd, uh, but it's I'm making this video on May 29th, and so it was just released in the U.S. on May 29th uh, today. And so I've read through the paper, uh, and then it's the overall significance, and, and it's not, to me, groundbreaking, although everything that they're doing is groundbreaking, uh, but this is, to me, a concept that I've been thinking about ever since I've like started getting into uh, AI and LLMs and everything around it, is that uh, what they do is, so their whole approach is just, uh, let's look at LLMs uh, and, and apply the same exact logic that uh, we would towards a human brain and human learning process and, and exactly uh, how a human could potentially learn. Uh, and then let's essentially make that into building blocks and then give the LLM model all of those building blocks. And like that's essentially what Olga GPT is. Uh, and then so up front, the fantastic thing about this is that uh, Tencent and this, this, the, the whole entire group and these researchers, they uh, released this under the Apache 2.0 license. So this is 100% free for the world to utilize. You could implement this model tomorrow if you want to. Uh, it operates and runs off of ChatGPT 3.5. Uh, and then when we look at the benchmarks uh, based off of that, I think you'll, you'll notice some pretty significant things. And so I think the first thing to deep dive into with this paper is on the introduction here, they go through the challenges. Uh, and like, uh, so this is what they, they essentially wanted to solve for. So challenge number one is how to systematically imitate and encode the main modules and the human cognitive framework, and at the same time schedule the modules according to the general human reasoning patterns in a reasonable way. Uh, so essentially they're just trying to, uh, how exactly can they put a module into a uh, LLM that thinks in, in a human process? Challenge number two, how to motivate LLMs to perform active learning like humans. That is, learn and evolve from historical mistakes uh, or expert solutions to difficult problems. So uh, bring in uh, external or past experiences. A, a good example to me that I think of around this is if you know anything about uh, the AI for Go, uh, it recently lost to a human player that uh, essentially a human amateur that uh, played with a strategy that the uh, AI model had never seen before. And that's why it was so devastatingly effective against the AI model, even though it was a very simplistic strategy that any amateur player within Go would be able to beat. Uh, the fact that the AI model just had simply never run into it before, never had uh, anything to draw from as far as experience when that happens, uh, it triggered the AI model to, to lose uh, very badly uh, in that particular instance. Uh, and then so uh, challenge number three is how can a LLM flexibly be able to leverage the diverse thinking patterns that human beings have evolved so as to improve its reasoning performance? Uh, and then this one's really long. Uh, the bottom line is, is that they, th what this particular challenge number three is going into is uh, this concept of chain of thought, uh, 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 like essentially like of uh, piecing together uh, the whole entire reasoning process uh, that a human makes when they acquire knowledge. Like it's a step-by-step uh, -step process. It's not like I just look at a cup and then I acquire instantly what a cup is. There's a step-by-step -step process that I went through it. Uh, for example, uh, platonic forms and then understanding like, the form of a cup. I've gone through uh, and can analyze it and that it plays in the background when I think of and conceptualize around a cup. And, and that's all due to chain of thought. And then so uh, it's been a subject for a while now of like how exactly do we give these tools to AI? And so essentially their framework for uh, how to give these tools to AI uh, is through a few different things. So with their method, uh, essentially what they do is they uh, give the AI different modules. Uh, and then so you can see that it gets breaking, broken down. The first one is a, a, a called intention enhance. Uh, and then so uh, essentially this what this is is a module that is designed to make the uh, 
LLM model focus its in, in, intention in situations where it, where it needs to to uh, like make a more clear decision. The second module that it gives it is more as a memory module. Uh, so essentially, like uh, more access to uh, long-term memory or uh, storage of memory uh, when it needs to 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 be able to uh, extract from different situations. Other thing, one uh, uh, it's a learning module. So if you go through learning, reasoning, uh, controller, and voting, the the uh, bottom line with uh, essentially the different modules and that they're building out is that they the the goal is, is that. that this is like the train of thought uh, of a person and essentially uh, with memory, learning, reasoning, a controller and a voting decisions that when you combine all of these elements, that's the, the uh, distillation of what the actual decision making process is. And then so with their methodology and, and their method, it's to break these d individual things into learning processes and then figure out the best way and the best approach to actually give this to an LLM model. Uh, and then when it goes down further, it essentially breaks down individually uh, for each one of these uh, individual modules exactly how it, it, they went about uh, giving the LLM model these, these tools. And then so for memory specifically, you can see that it, give, it gave it like a facts library, uh, which is information that it can draw on. It also gave it a tools library. Uh, notes, it, I think is a very specific one and they dive a lot more into notes in the paper. So notes is uh, if an LLM is consistently giving a wrong answer or consistently doesn't know an answer, giving it the ability to uh, note like that uh, particular problem. And then so when it runs into a new situation or a problem or, or an answer that could be related to its notes, it can then refer back to on its notes and then be able to update uh, its logic uh, in, in order to how, how to use that. Uh, and then the last is uh, giving it um, a thinking library. So essentially like here's the tools that humans utilize to, to be able to think like to, to uh, here's this like a step-by-step -step process that you can use if you're in a situation where you need to uh, be proactive in your thinking process. Uh, and then based off of that proactivity, that's the next model that it gave it is actively learning. So r right now we know that uh, LLM models, it's essentially this uh, process of, of they're triggered by prompts. And then so uh, trying to take that uh, a step further and then make it more of an active learning process, give it tools to learn from its mistakes. Uh, again, is, is literally what this paper is doing and what they they did within this. It's a, like it's uh, to me, I, I, it's it, it's one thousand percent novel because as far as I know, and they write it within this, they're the first ones to go with this approach towards uh, an LLM model and and thinking towards an LLM model, giving it these type of capabilities. But to me, I like that's it just boggles my mind that we haven't gone towards this process yet, but here's where we're, we're at. And we, we see, uh, we'll see in a little bit significant gains from this. Uh, so then the next one with the, the reasoning model, uh, essentially it gives it a few different ways to think and gives it actual framework for thinking. Here's uh, two different frameworks that, and multiple different frameworks that you can utilize uh, within your thinking process. And then so if you have to think about different equations and different situations, you should think about them, them differently. In one situation, you're going to want to think critically. Uh, and in another situation, you're going to want to think se sequentially. But so the the all of this combined is here's the tools, here's how to utilize the tools, uh, here's the best situation in which you can utilize the tools, uh, uh, giving it a, as like a, a, a literal overall toolkit for how to think. Um, and then so uh, the last two are the, the controller module, which they, they go over more, a lot more briefly. Uh, and then the voting module, but with the controller module, the controller module is specifically around mathematical reasoning uh, and then uh, our mathematical equations. And then what you can see is that uh, for, like for, for pure math, it, it's, it scores it, it improves pure mathematical reasoning based off of what they have done so far within their testing around this model. Uh, very significantly. This is a very low error rate for uh, mathematical reasoning. Uh, 
and then uh, the last one is uh, voting, which is essentially just like uh, giving it a different way uh, to uh, instruct itself, uh, giving it essentially like a, a second option to, to train the model when it runs into uh, issues uh, and needs to uh, update its information on like on how to learn essentially. Uh, and then in the section four, they go into the experimental process and it breaks down essentially uh, what they did. They took uh, chat GPT 3.5. These are the different evaluation metrics that they use. Here's the baselines. They go over it here. Uh, essentially, they use uh, chat GPT 3.5 turbo as the base model. Uh, then they put on their like their chain of their chain of thought uh methodology uh, and then uh, stacked on uh, like a, a, a few other uh, ancillary uh, models and modules uh, and then they uh, put their model on top of that and then measured the performance and the output and then what we're looking at uh, starting here is uh, the output and the, the range of that um, and then so starting specifically on this chart uh, like uh, the major things to, to focus on uh, are I think like uh, starting uh, and, and looking here are th like these two scores here uh, and then what I want to highlight uh, with these particular so this is uh, the like uh, the Tencent which is a Chinese company um, so they have uh, different um, benchmarks testing sometimes than, than uh, and, and different uh, methodology for their benchmark testing uh, for the uh, Chinese versus the like uh, the US method and then so this doesn't directly translate so the two that we want to look at are these two the 6.4 uh, uh, the 0.64 and the 0.67 uh, and then when we go here to the um, uh, the open this is the open LLM leaderboard from hugging face uh, this is essentially the, the the leader on this open LLM leaderboard right now, which is a model called Falcon 40B. Uh, and then what we can see is that um, this particular model is outperforming uh, Falcon 40B, which Falcon 40B is uh, reportedly uh, outperforming Chat GPT uh, 3.5 by leaps and bounds uh, and and uh, benchmarks. Uh, significantly higher uh, than Chat GPT 3.5 uh, at a base level, and is uh, purportedly the highest uh, performing open uh, source um, LLM model that is currently available. So what we could see is that simply by utilizing the Olga GPT model and, and by applying this particular model and their framework to Chat GPT 3.5 and the modules that they uh, introduce and release on this paper uh, and through this paper completely open source it's available on their github page uh, as well as the paper itself uh, and um, everything you can do it yourself and essentially uh, increase chat gpt 3.5's performance uh, onto a level where uh, it would beat any other uh, free llm currently on the market uh, by leaps and bounds and uh, potentially with all of these elements combined uh, give it that actual framework for AGI and I think that's the the bottom line big question and you're going to start seeing this question more and more and the answer the very specific answer to these very specific question is that we don't know like and we don't uh, how are we exactly are we going to uh, know and recognize it when it comes out there's not a test for AGI we don't have uh, an AGI test. Okay, if uh, artificial intelligence checks every single one of these boxes, then it's AGI. If it doesn't check all the boxes, then it's not. That's not how. It's not a uh, black or white process like that. Um, and then also too, we haven't and we don't know how effective these things are. Uh, and then so as we go through it uh, and we we go through these different models, we don't know sometimes or exactly or explicitly what exactly within it is the the uh, like the secret sauce the thing that's propelling the uh, advancement uh, of it forward so much so in this particular instance is it the fact that it's all these building blocks combined or are some of these individual building blocks 
more important overall in the long run uh, than than other ones, and we don't know uh, at like some of those questions yet because this paper just came out, uh, and those are like the questions that uh, Tencent raises uh, a lot within this, and and why they're not grandstanding so much on this paper is because for them this is just an initial test. This is uh, hey we decided to apply this model and this framework, uh, and essentially and like an an overall. Uh, model towards giving it actual AGI or like full thought capabilities uh, and we found that it was successful it, it, it uh, increased cognitive abilities of LLM on levels that they couldn't that they weren't predicting um, and so they released the paper for further development and further advancement and you see that's kind of how all of this is going is that someone just gets excited uh, because of the breakthrough and the breakthroughs themselves fuel more breakthroughs. So I think in a few weeks we're going to see uh, probably even more papers based off of Ola GPT. But so this is an overview of Ola GPT, which is the significant breakthrough for AI for today. Uh, if you like this kind of video and this uh, content, please like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.